Thanks for staying with us. Now, copyright infringement is the unlawful use of works protected by copyright law without permission for a usage where such permission is required, thereby infringing certain exclusive rights granted to the copyright holder, such as the right to produce, distribute, display, or perform the work, um, the protected work, or to make derivative works. Now, the copyright holder is typically the works creator or a publisher or other business to whom copyright has been assigned. Oftentimes, we see creatives going on social media, accusing producers of stealing their creative idea, or in today's case in point, for instance, Ms. Tobore, an investigative journalist who called up Moabudu on a movie she produced that was centered around sex trafficking, her true life story. Now, this is not new when it comes to um, intellectual property. So today we are talking to creatives and we are asking, how well informed are you about protecting your intellectual property? Now, please let us share what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 8038463. So I'm going to bring in our guest like in two minutes. But I wanted to hear, AK, I'll come to you first, then I'll come to EC. How well do you even understand anything about copyrights, right? Because this battle, every now and then, you see it back and forth. Maybe a, 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 a music artist that goes to sign under a label, the next thing they fall out, why? Oh, there was issues and all of that. But AK, let me come to you. You know, do you know anything about copyrights, you know, and protecting your intellectual property? How well do you know about that? Well, I would say um, that I, I know a little bit about it. And let me explain also because I, I oversee a lot of small businesses. Yes. And it's the same thing as getting a patent. Um, so maybe there's a difference between the patent and the copyright. So I'll let the, I'll let the uh, professional tell us. But there's always a talk about owning the rights to whatever it is that you produce, whether it's the product, by doing it the right way. Now, apart from even knowing it that way or the little bit I know, this has been in the media too often for people to sleep on it, okay? So you hear someone complaining and saying, someone stole my idea, someone stole my song. The thing is, how do you prevent that? You don't have to experience it before you learn. You can learn from other people's experience. And so we, we hear a lot about copyrights, what is mine, what is not mine, what should be mine. And I have a lot of questions today for, for again, because a lot of people claim rights. And you know who are? It's the first person that runs to the media. Yes, yeah, so always looks like it's correct. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You get because I find out in the past that some people did not even know their rights well enough to accuse. Mm. So the thing really is, are you well informed? For example, one of the questions I want to ask is that you know, if I'm working for somebody, which is this case, does it mean that okay, I'm working for my employer today? Do I own the rights to everything that I have done in that employer's premise? That's a very you good know, question we're going to ask. Name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we're, going to, we're going to bring in our guest. So let me just bring him in. So Mena Ajakwovi is a partner at UB, UUBO. Uh, that's um, Udo Udoma and Bilo Sage Partners. <laughs> Intellectual <laughs> Property Litigation, ab uh, Arbitration and Alt Alternative Dispute Resolution and Telecommunications Media and Technology Department. Now he advises on copyright Patents, trademarks, domain name, broadcasting, music, movie, comedy, production, distribution, branding, image rights, franchising, licensing, amongst others. So he's the perfect person <laughs> to have this conversation. Now, he has represented some of the world's biggest names and owners of IP in this disputes and um, re relative um, issues in, in this area. So thank you so much for joining us, Barrister Mena. <laughs> Thank so you, you. you were just in a hurry to jump into AK's question. So maybe we'll start from there. So yes, I wanted. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Do. No, 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 no. Shoot. So yes, in the case where something. someone, so let us let us probably bring it down first from the case in point tonight before we now give the broader advice to creatives because the goal for tonight's show is let creatives listen because I know that the law is not emotional. The law only follows what has been signed and documented. That is only when you can win some of these things. So in the case in point, right, you're under an employee, like um, um, uh, what um, AK had said, you know, do you even have the right to say whatever it is that I produce under that employee, I can own that copyright? Is it possible? Okay, so the law is very clear. Intellectual property is a creation of the mind. Now, people use the word copyright, patent, 
and any other thing related to it. Now, the mind is very creative. And the law says that the creation that comes from the mind expressed in a particular way is protectable. That's the law. Now, the law also goes on to define in what situation that kind of creation can be protected and against who and for what purpose. So it's not everything that comes from the mind that is protectable. For instance, ideas are not protectable. So if you like, you have an idea. I had this idea. Where is the idea? The law cannot protect idea. So now you made um, a, a statement that if you're working for somebody who owns the copyright or who owns the, the intellectual property to the things that come out from that situation, the law also defines it so that if you're an employee and, you're an, and there's an employer, the law says that the work that you produce, the output that comes out of it, first of all, belongs to you. Hmm. You are the author. It belongs to you. However, that right that belongs to you can be taken away from you easily in your letter of employment. Hmm. So if your letter of employment does not specifically say that the output would be would belong to the employer, hmm. then you the author of those work owns those copyrights. That's what the law says. So people, I've heard people just saying, I'm an, I'm a master, an employer, I'm an employee, he's my employer, therefore anything that is created belongs to my employer. What if your letter of employment does is silent about it? Hmm. If your letter of employment is silent about it, then those work belong to you. That's what the law says. Oh, you know, legal okay, matters well, is very... Yeah, go ahead, well, AK. Can I stretch my question? So let's even use a case in point. Um, I'm the employer, and I pay you for um, doing a particular kind of job. And because really, I think what we're talking about in this case is investigative journalism that is sponsored by an employer. Now, who really owns that? Because you're supposed to go and do the job. So I'm not talking about I'm creating a new product out of the air. What about if creating a product is what I am paid to do? So if I am paid to create a fantastic product, that is what I am employed to do. If I create that product out from my idea, does it mean that the product belongs to me, seeing that the product and the research is being paid for by the employer? Absolutely. I just need that clarification. <laughs> you see, the law is a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful concept. It covers everything. The law also thought about the situation you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And it says for publication for in a publishing house, mm -hmm. it is usually the publisher, the employer that owns it. Because that is the whole idea of bringing you in the first place. There's a full provision of the Copyright Act, which I would, I mean, subject to how discussion flows that I have to read. So for publication, for journalists, for those people like that, the work belongs to the publisher, except you now use it for something else. Hmm. Because that is the reason why you are engaged in the first place. But generally, see, the author owns the work. That's the first mention, first ownership belongs to the author. Then you cannot develop from there. And let me just add, copyright is not registrable. Hmm. Attaches to you by law. So when you create it, as you're creating it, the law is giving you the power to protect it so that nobody's, nobody copies it, nobody distributes it, nobody uploads it somewhere, nobody does anything that you are entitled to do. That's copyright. Okay. Huh. Thank so, you. <laughs> <laughs> Barista Mena, hi. So well, let's take a look at um, sales and royalties, okay? Um, what is the role of sales and royalties as it affects um, intellectual property? Okay, so well, it depends on the endeavor that you're talking about. So for instance, music, what you live by is the royalty. Your royalty and the sales and everything that comes about it. The exploitation, royalty is an outcome from the exploitation of your work. So you, you expect that when you do, you put your work out there, 
after a certain time from the exploitation, either a songwriter, somebody uses that song to make something else, you expect royalties from it. So it's a legitimate expectation from the exploitation of your intellectual property. That's simple. That's how simplistic it is. The illegitimate expectation in terms of funds, money, earnings from the exploitation of the intellectual property. Mm. So it's a, it, you are entitled to it and the law protects it. It's a property right. It's divisible, mm. it's transferable. It is, mm -hmm. You can enforce it. You can do anything with it and it, it, will, it will live on. The lifespan of your copyright, um, the law says, for instance, literary work, artistic work, the law stipulates that it's 70 years after the death of the person who makes it. Now for mm. music, it's 50 years. It's mm. very long. Mm. So it's not, um, it's, it, the law recognizes it. It's, um, it's very beautiful. But one thing that you cannot transfer it, you cannot transfer your IP without having it in writing. Okay. So mm. any transfer of IP that is not written down, it's not, it's not recognizable. So those are some of the things that owners of work should do. Creatives generally, they're very lax about it. Yeah. They don't touch, don't cross the T's and dot okay, the I's. Okay, because they're not aware. <laughs> Let's go on. Marissa, Let's man, go yeah, so this thing you just hit, you just hit the nail on the okay. head when you said about, you see, so we are creatives. We just want to do the work, we want to show the world, you know. Mm -hmm. But you are the lawyer. And you are looking at this person that, oh, no, you have not come to sit down with a lawyer, you know, to tell you how you can go about this, your work. So if you had one thing to say to creatives in terms of if they conceptualize an idea and they want to push it out there in the world, what would be the first thing they should do with that concept before even taking it out to say they want to publish or whatever? What should they do? The first thing you should do with your idea is to write it down. Write the vision, make it plain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me not go for that wrong. No. So the first thing to do with your idea is to write it down. So if it's a song, sing it to your phone. Mm -hmm. Put it down on your phone in a place that it can be perceived because it is the expression of ideas that is protectable. It is not the ideas dancing around in the air. One thing you must know, ideas are intrinsically parallel. Mm. The way it's hitting you is hitting Hit another person else. in Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. So it's not original to you, it's parallel. So the first person to give it expression is the, is the, is the owner of the work. Mm. So the first thing to do is to write it. Second thing to do is get, think of how to exploit it. If you want to exploit it, think of how to exploit it commercially. Mm. And be methodical about it. The law is methodical. It's not emotional. So when you cover those bases, and the next thing to do is to seek a lawyer. Come and look for me. Uh, for upcoming okay. people. <laughs> Go ahead, AK. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I like all this enlightenment that we're receiving. Now, there's a particular question I want to ask. Now, I feel that, please correct me if I'm wrong, if to say you have the copyright to something, you must have gone through the legal process of getting a copyright. Now, if you do not copyright your work, I put it in the public space. If I want to, let's say, copy that work, do I need to come to you to get a permission when you do not have a copyright? You know, so it's a release, as we people release things in social media and, you know, it becomes popular. Can I come later and say I was one that started it if I do not have not registered it? How do you claim what you don't own? Hmm. If you if you, don't, if you have not seen it, if you have not put it out there, you, you how would you now say yes? I was the one that started it. I thought yeah. about it. So it goes back back to what I said first of all. You must put it down in a medium where it can be perceived. But then we cannot say who wrote it first or who did it first. Who no, published no, it? No, AK's question <laughs> is: I have written it down. But yes, I did not yes, copyright I've it. it. I've written it down, but I have not copyrighted it. I've not, I've not gone to the law to say this is mine. Yes. Okay. So, so like I said, <laughs> copyright. If it's a, if it's a trademark, you register it. If it's so, for instance, you're selling uh, small chops. 
and the, 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 the logo with which you sell your small shops is, is a feast like this. Mm. So what you do, you, you came up with the concept of using a feast to sell, sell your small shops. You go to the trademark office and register that trademark, that feast for the sale of small shops. That is when you can boldly say, if anybody uses a feast, for the sale That's of small shop, the person is violating your rights. Hmm. Hmm. That's what it is. Okay. So okay. no matter how popular it is, if I have not registered it, the first person to go and tell the law that it belongs to me, that's the owner. So when you register it, law gives you certain rights of a registered trademark owner. Nobody can use that feast to sell. So, for instance, you cannot use the word Coke to sell any drink with that color. Hmm. No matter if, it, if, it's, if it's, even if it is Zobo that is in your, in your bottle, once you put that logo of Coke inside, it has transformed what is inside. Into Coke. <laughs> Into Coke. Therefore, nobody... So you'll be passing off the business of another person mm -hmm. as your own mm -hmm. if you use that logo to sell your Zobo. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so somebody has sent in a comment. I think her name is Alero. She says, the Tobori issue, Abitobore issue, mm -hmm. is such an emotional one because of what she went through. I think, yes, legally she cannot claim anything, but Moabudu introduced a moral stand which she should have upheld to even um to even when the channel distribution changed uh, i think we know you know it, it was um she was supposed to show in cinema, in cinema there was no cinema then they moved to netflix yes but you know you are a lawyer you do not deal with emotions right so mm -hmm. it is more of you know facts and figures but if you were going to respond to alera's comments you know what would you say should be like a middle ground you know for this kind because there's a lot of water that has gone under this bridge and truly Absolutely. because it's her life work i mean me going through that hell you know, and somebody takes up that story. Because, you know, when you were reading out something, you said, yes, it is the creator's property. But when it's published, it be maybe belongs to the, the publisher. For instance, publisher. in this case, it's Premium Times. Mm -hmm. But now it is beyond Premium Times because they have moved that story into a different um, um, expression, which is in a movie. Yes. So does, does Premium Times... Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, first of all, I have to put certain disclaimer. Okay. In, in talking about that issue. The, the disclaimers are this. First of all, I have not engaged both parties personally. Yeah. Mm. I have not, they did not give me documents to read. Brief, yeah. I did not go. So I don't have the benefits of the full facts. Mm. I don't have benefits. So the, the, what I know is what I gathered from social media, from mm. publication, from hearing both sides. And I'm able to to, to, to get a sense of what is happening. So number one, there's, there's a controversy of some sort. Mm -hmm. There's some disagreement as to who owns what and who does not own what. What right do I have and what right do I not have? Exactly. It is already there, it's mm -hmm. in the public domain. Now the issues, they have to be resolved either judicially or they are resolved through mediation or settlement of some sort. Yeah. That is what both parties can do. But in resolution of that, the resolution of that, there's the law will have to be referred to. And the position of the law is clear. It's not emotional. Mm. And the person to construe or to interpret the position of the law is the court, the judge. But whether here or there, I'm going to read out a particular provision of the law that will speak to it. No matter how they go, they must come to this particular provision of the Copyright Act to have a resolution. Now, it is found at section nine of the Copyright Act. I would not, because of time, I would just go straight to subsection three. So it's section nine, subsection three of the Copyright Act. 
with your permission, let me read it. Go ahead. Not the judge, but I'll just read that with permission. Where a literary, artistic, or musical work is made by the author in the course of his employment by the proprietor of a newspaper, magazine, or a similar periodical under a contract of service or apprenticeship as is so made for the purpose of publication in a newspaper, magazine, or similar periodical. The said proprietor shall, in the absence of any agreement to the contrary, be the first owner of copyright in the work, insofar as the copyright relates to the publication of the work in any newspaper, magazine, or similar periodical, or to the reproduction of the work for the purpose, for the purpose of its being so published. But in all other respects, mm. the author shall be the first owner of the work. Mm. In all so, other respects. In all other respects. So, on that so note, if you are not using it for publication, <laughs> yes, in all other, other respects, respect. the first owner of the work shall be the author. author. So so that is the that is the law. I can't speak. Okay, to you know it. what? We would we will continue, we'll expand, shake more on that, but we want to just take a very short break. We'll be right back. <laughs> 